Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 1.1. We're going to do a lot of definitions. Chemistry matters, some scientific methods. I want to point out there's more than one. Hypothesis, what a control is, observation, interpretation. So this is going to be a pretty writing-heavy podcast, so sharpen your pencils and be ready for this. And welcome to the beginning of chemistry, because we're starting something. Chemistry is a study of matter and the changes matter undergo. So it's not just matter. It's matter and the changes matter undergoes. It's this fountain of bubbly fun. It's this flame of the guy who I think is shoot, spitting fire. I don't know. But notice how he has the safety goggles on his head as he's shooting fire. That is a bad idea. He should have them over his eyes, which is very, very bad. But study of matter and the changes that matter undergoes. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't know anything that has mass and doesn't take up space or anything that takes up space and doesn't have mass. But you need both of them. Here are the tricky ones. If I say, here's a gas, OK? So does a gas take up space? Well, yeah, you can have a full balloon, sorry, full balloon, or a deflated balloon, right? So a balloon can take up space, but it also has mass. So gases have mass. So it is matter. Heat, OK, heat is not matter because things are not warmer or colder when they're hotter, OK? So space is empty. So space is empty. It's not matter. So when we ask these questions to try and trick you, because you know that's what school's all about, is to try and trick you. Hopefully not, but sometimes it is. Um, energy is not mass. OK, not mass. Uh, not matter. What's the matter with you? Oh, really bad Lion King joke coming out. No, I skipped it. We study matter and its changes by the scientific methods. There are many methods. This is important. There are many methods. Scientists have so many different ways to study things because science is a creative endeavor. Hopefully you felt like we're going to challenge your creativity or expose you to some different ways of thinking. You're going to develop new ideas in this course. So there are many methods, which is great. right? Astronomers differ from biologists and chemists. Um, can you put Mars behind Uranus? <laughs> can you put, uh, no, you can't move these things. So astronomers cannot do controlled experiments where they move things around. They have to look for other planets to do what you want and hope they're out there in the universe sometimes. What you were taught 10 times in school is common, you know, which is like purpose, hypothesis, um, procedure, data, blah, blah, blah. All those things are fine. You should know what order they go in um, just from paying attention for the past 10 years. Hypotheses are testable predictions of what will occur in an experiment. So they are testable. They're predictions. So you write them down, why you do the experiment kind of thing. Testable predictions of what will occur in an experiment. Here are the tricky ones. So these are the ones where it's like, oh, you should be able to get these. If I give you something, uh, at the beginning of time, there were bacteria. Well, you can't test that because you can't go back to the beginning of time. So this is not a hypothesis because it's dependent upon being there. Not hypothesis. We're not there. OK? Something you can never know. OK? Do you know what I'm thinking? My hypothesis, you're thinking. Uh, no, it's not. It, it doesn't work. Um, if something is wrong or dumb, it is still a hypothesis. So I said, my hypothesis is that the sun is um, made of baloney. Just because it's dumb doesn't mean it's not testable. I can go to the sun and take a bite of it and find out that it really tastes like salami. Hypothesis. So here's an example. Little people live near TV. That is a hypothesis. Little people live near TV that do these things. Why is that? You can take apart your TV and look for the little people. Isn't that nice? Oh, look, there's little people in your TV, and that's what happens. The sun revolves around the Earth. That is a hypothesis. Why is that a hypothesis? It is testable. Hypothesis. It's testable, right? We can look and see how the things move. Not an example. So this disease is called by undetectable little aliens that sneak into your skin. Well, if it's undetectable, we cannot test for it. Okay. Experiment, experiments need a control for comparison. Okay. So a control group is the best comparison. Hey, that's one of our little vocabulary words. Control group is the best comparison in an experiment. In an experiment. What, fertil what liquid fertilizer is the best? Your control group is water. Okay, So here's my little plant. Look, it's a flower. It's so beautiful. 
Yeah, look at that right there. Oops, should have a leaf, right? So if I have three plants, I want to see which fertilizer is the best. I shouldn't compare fertilizer A and fertilizer B to, you know, no fertilizer at all, which would be no water, because then what do you get? Uh, no, I guess it wouldn't even look like that. You get a dead plant, so you get that. What antibiotic has a few side effects? The control group is a sugar pill or a placebo, which you talked about in biology. Okay, so half the people take antibiotic A to see if they get better. Half the people get antibiotic B to see if they get better. The other people get a placebo, which is C. And then what happens is the people with C die of an infection, and A and B may or may not. But watch out. Observations are directly detectable by your senses. Senses, not just your eyes. Okay. Interpretations are inferences or explanations a person comes up with. For example, water is wet. Is that an observation or an inference? Well, your senses detect directly that it is wet. The grass needs sunlight to grow. Oh, sorry, I got a little formatting here. The grass needs sunlight to grow. That is not directly detectable with your senses, so it's an inference. The temperature is 85 degrees. Now, Here's one that's kind of nice. This one is, or not nice to me, it's an observation. I know it's not directly detectable with your senses you use a thermometer, but um, it is just a measurement. So that's the tricky one. See how Mr. Fowler tells you the tricks? Watch out, watch out. I am tan because of the sun. Really? I am tan because I did a spray-on tan. That's right. Look at me, Mr. Spray-on. Woo-hoo-hoo. Um, and that is an interpretation because um, it's not directly detectable. Madeline is ugly. <laughs> oh, that's an interpretation. I'm sure her mother thinks that she's beautiful. Zebras smell funny. That's an interpretation. Um, it's the funny part, right? So if there's any kind of interpretation to it, if you said zebras smell like horses, eh, that's a little better. Qualitative measurements describe without numbers and units. Quantitative me measurements describe using numbers and a unit. For example, that's a white rose. Oh, look. Belle got a white rose from the beast. Why am I drawing so many flowers and that one's upside down? A white rose from the beast. Oh, how sweet. That is qualitative. 57-inch fish. Hey, there's a number. There's a unit. That is quantitative. 2020. No unit. That's qualitative. So here's the tricky one. Yes, you need a unit to be quantitative. If there's a number but no unit, it is just dumb. So if I said, look, Stevie got a 73. That is just dumb. 73 what? You don't know what that is. So that's kind of where you're at. Now, this has my favorite little analogy with it, my favorite example from LL Cool J. There's a song by LL Cool J in like 1983 where it's just LL Cool J saying people have a big old butt. So. LL Cool J thinks Judy got a big old butt, oh yeah. Susan got a big old butt, oh yeah. LaQuisha got a big old butt, oh yeah. And that's the whole song, OK? This would be qualitative. Quantitative would be Judy's butt is 60 inches in circumference, where you just go, wow, that's a big old butt. So, And look, you can even get experience the new size and comfort. They have extra wide toilet seats for people with a big old butt. So thank you, Home Depot. You've saved me. Laws describe what happened in nature. Okay. Law of gravity. Stuff falls, but no reason why. Notice, describe what happens. The law of gravity. Stuff falls. That's what happens. What happens? Stuff falls. No reason why. We don't know why stuff falls. We just know that it does. A theory explains what happens in nature. So the theory of evolution explains why there are so many different critters out there. Whoops, ouch. There. Sorry. So why are there so many critters out there? Well, the theory of evolution says there are so many extra critters that live that the ones that are best suited to the environment survive. And because there's so many different ones, there's going to be a bigger variety and blah, 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 blah. Before you know it, you have six different types of angry birds out there. Angry, angry birds. So why can't a theory become a law? Some of you have had just the mistaken just life of having someone tell you that theory can become a law. They cannot. They are two totally different things. So remember, a theory is an explanation, and a law is a description. And mind you, they are special. They are well supported, and they're you know wonderful, and they have all kinds of support from the scientific community and 
confirmation experiments and things like that. But an explanation cannot become a description. That theory of evolution explaining why those things happen can never become a description. Laws are pretty much the take of the census, so few errors are made, but some still are. Explanations can be wrong, revised, and evolved, and that happens all of the time. People used to think the sun resolved around the Earth. People used to think that giraffes had long necks because they reached up for food and passed that on to their generation. Definitions. Okay, review. Yay, we're done. Chemistry. You need to know what chemistry is. Theory, law, qualitative, quantitative, hypothesis, control, observation, interpretation, matter. Man, this was too much writing. There are many scientific methods. Hypothesis must be testable. I observe this podcast is over. I infer it will be more entertaining than hearing people complain about AP Euro. Toodles.